All right, guys, it's time to get back to it. DIY Nano Reef Tank build. It is time to add our very first coral. What do you guys think? All right, so before we add our very first corals, there are several things we need to take care of. One, um, this is a must for you guys out there starting a new reef tank, or even if you already have one. If you are not using a GFCI or have not plugged all your tank power into a GFCI circuit, please go do that right now. It's very important. This is in all the outlets you have around your sinks, your bathtubs, because it will protect you if there is a short and uh, you stick your hand in the tank, you could get yourself electrocuted. So we're gonna plug everything into this. What I ended up getting was this portable GFCI from Home Depot. It's a Husky brand. It, you find that brand everywhere in Home Depot. So I'm gonna plug this into the wall outlet and then I'm gonna plug the power strip onto here so that it is protected. So that's a must. Next thing I gotta do is uh, install the random flow generator. One other thing that I decided to do was to upgrade the heater uh, and the controller because um, after a couple of weeks with the uh, very inexpensive free C Amazon heater. I'm not happy with it at all. It's very hard to control and I just don't feel comfortable with it being reliable if I was to put fish and corals into the tank. So hindsight probably was a waste of money. Uh, probably she just went with this guy, which wasn't that much more expensive. This is $20 um, on Amazon. It's an Eheim Jaeger. Um, or Jaeger, I think it's Jaeger. Um, all my tanks, even way back 20 plus years ago, I used um, this heater. And uh, so that's what I'm gonna stick with, stick with what I know. So um, it's a little bit bigger than the, the free C. That was the other reason why I went with that cheapy one, but just because of the size. This one's a little bit bigger, but I think I can still get it to fit in the, uh, the middle chamber in the back. Um, and I decided to go ahead and purchase the Inkbird, uh, which as you guys know, I'm running on the cube, um, cube tank. So I have not opened this yet, but um, this is the temp controller. You can see. So we're going to install that as well and make sure uh, our temperature is reli reliable. And of course, before we add any livestock in there, I want to make sure the water is good and cycled. It's been a few weeks, so I think it's good. Um, and I have been, I have tested it at least once <laughs> just using these API ammonia. You can see that. And nitrite test kits. Um, I lost the cards to compare the color, but it's pretty easy to uh, tell whether you got zero um, ammonia and zero nitrite, which I'm gonna just double check uh, before we add the coral. And of course, I'm gonna check salinity, just to make sure we're close. I think we're good, but double check that too. It's always good to make sure before you start adding your very first livestock into your tank. Salinity, temperature, and water chemistry, meaning no ammonia, no nitrites. I, I may test nitrates just to see if there's nitrates in there, um, but we'll see. But of course, you need lights if you're gonna grow corals. So as I told you guys before, I was gonna go with the Night Crew. So this is from Amazon. Hyper Reef 50, it is, let me read the specs, 24 volt DC, it's 50 watts, and it's six levels of light intensity, adjustable, three lighting modes, selectable, I'm not sure what that means, color and spectrum tunable, which I'm thinking is just, you just basically uh, can adjust the blues and the whites separately. It says it's su suitable for soft coral, LPS, and some SP. So I'm gonna put this uh, together. Um, 
replace the heater, do a water test, and uh, then we'll be ready for the corals. <laughs> All right, so I finished setting everything up. Got the lights set up, the heater, the ink bird. We got the heater plugged into the uh, ink bird. New heater in there, I'll show you in the back. There it is. The temp probe is down there in the first chamber. And we have the random flow generator going, so and now I can kind of direct the flow wherever I want to. So that's cool. And we got the night crew up here. I was a little worried that this um, was might cause it to fail because it's pretty heavy. But I think the way I have it set up, it isn't too far out. So it doesn't um, apply too much torque on this arm. So I think we'll be okay. We will see long term. It's pretty much all the way down just to to uh, get to that quarter inch thick acrylic so uh, if you guys are going to get this light the thinnest sort of wall you can mount it onto is a quarter inch uh, which is what that acrylic is boom there's a the light it is probably my guess, it's on 100% both. Anyway, off camera, I'm gonna um, mess with the lights, make sure it's all at the proper setting that I want it to be for the corals. And, and then I will do one last test for ammonia and nitrite, just to make sure. And then I think we're ready for some corals. All right, guys, just finished the uh, ammonia and nitrite test. And both are zero. Uh, like I said, I lost the uh, color chart cards, but I know that yellow is zero for ammonia and this baby blue, sky blue is zero for nitrite. So um, that's where we are. And like I said, I've been tossing in some uh, fish food in here. So if uh, I wasn't, if this wasn't cycled properly, we would see ammonia um, after all that fish food and stuff that I've thrown in here. So uh, I'm pretty sure that the tank is pretty well cycled. Um, but I'm gonna do a quick uh, nitrate test and we'll see what that shows. I don't think it's gonna be very high, but I just wanna see if there's any detectable levels of nitrate. All right, guys, just finished the nitrate test using the NIOS kit. As you can see, there is some nitrates. So if you compare the zero, you can tell this is more yellow versus the reference. And it's about one PPM, maybe a little less. It's a pretty good match, I think. I don't know, it might be a little bit less. Definitely not three. And definitely not zero. So there you go. We've confirmed the nitrogen cycle. So from carbon-based matter, fish food. Uh, I haven't been. I wasn't able to detect any ammonia at all. I wasn't able to catch that. But we got no ammonia, no nitrites. But we do have nitrates, and it has to go through that cycle in order to get nitrates. So we are good to go, ready to toss some corals in here. I think we we're probably ready a while ago, but now I'm confident. We got the lights, we got the upgraded heater, we got the ink bird. It's now just time for corals. All right, here are the three candidates. <laughs> um, first, the uh, Ultra Ghanis, the little miniature Ghanis. I'm gonna see if I can get them on the sand first. 
I don't know if I should cut the uh, stem. Probably should. Oh, no, actually. Looks like it's enough sand to keep it uh, upright. So there's that guy. We'll put the. Then the next is the rainbow incinerators. So we want that, so I'll put them there. It's not going to be their final spots, but um, that's what they're going to be for now. And then put this guy here for now. So I'm just going to see how they like this spot. All right, guys, there they are. There's a hammer. The Ghanis and the Zoanthids. Uh, of course, they're pretty unhappy right now because I just transferred them over here. So we'll give them a day to get settled in and we'll check on them again tomorrow. All right, it's the next day. And here's how the corals are looking. Actually, not too bad. There's a hammer. It's, uh, looks like it's mostly out now. Um, one thing I've noticed is there's not a lot of flow on this tank. Ooh, look at the Ghanis. You can finally see them. They're not quite opened up as much as uh, I'd like. I think it take, they need a little bit more time. Uh, especially the uh, Zoas. Um, currently not super happy, not very open. So I think they all need a little bit more time acclimating, but, um, I think so far so good. Anyway, guys, thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. I'm really happy with how this tank is coming along, but the journey is just beginning. So if you want to follow along, make sure to hit the subscribe button. And while you're at it, just hit the like button too. Why not, right? It's easy. Anyway, enough of my rambling. Till next time, stay salty.